Today we're going to talk about how to use the grid method to reproduce a photo. The first thing you need to do with a grid method is to get a photo either from a magazine or printed out. And in our classroom, we have these plastic grids that you can tape to your photo so that you don't have to draw a grid on them yourself. But if you don't have a grid, you can take a ruler and a marker and draw your own. So I'm going to, this ruler, the zero starts at this little tick, but some of our other rulers, the zero starts at the end of the ruler. You'll have to double check which one you have. I'm gonna make sure that my ruler is aligned uh, parallel with the edge of the page so that um, when I make my marks, they're not crooked. And I'm gonna mark every inch And this is eight and a half, so I have like half an inch over here. And then I'm gonna drag my ruler up to the top of the paper and do the same thing. Now, I'm not gonna flip it around, because if I flip it around, now my half inch is on this end instead of over here. And when I go to make my marks, they're not gonna line up, all right? So from here, where I just finished making my marks, I'm just sliding my ruler up to the top. I'm not turning the paper around. And now my half inch is going to stay lined up with the half inch that I marked at the bottom of the paper. And from here, I just connect the dots. And you're just going to go ahead and connect the dots all the way down. All right, so it will be all the way down. And then you just turn your paper and do the same thing on this side. Mark every inch, slide your ruler up, mark every inch, and then connect the dots all the way down until you have a grid on your piece of paper. Once you have your grid marked out, you're going to need a piece of paper that is the same size as your grid if you want to um, make a drawing that's the same size as your image. However, if you want to make a bigger grid, if you want to enlarge the image, you're going to have to get a bigger piece of paper. So when I want to make them the same size, this is six inches by seven inches. And now I made my piece of paper six inches by seven inches. But when I want to do uh, a two inch grid, on my big piece of paper, I need a 12 by 14 inch piece of paper for that. And you just follow the same steps with your new piece of paper that you just did, all right? You're gonna mark every inch, slide it up, mark every inch, and then connect the lines. And eventually your grid will be drawn on your other piece of paper. Now, if I'm doing my big piece of paper, I'm gonna mark every two inches instead of every inch so that I can grid it up so it can get bigger. From here, you're just gonna copy what's in each box into your new grid. So this edge starts here, comes down through that square, comes lower, and then this curve plays through these two squares. See, right here. And then it comes up through this square, comes up through this square and then wraps around. Right? And eventually you will get something that looks like this. Okay? You're gonna use the grid to cite all of your angles and draw all of your shapes. Right. And it works the same on the big piece of paper as it does on the little piece of paper. So with my big piece of paper, I'm going to do the same thing. Through this square is where the first angle travels, this right here. And then it curves around through these two squares, comes up through this square, 
There's a little bit of here, and then it wraps around. So now it's, uh, the proportions are the same, but it's getting bigger. Once you are at this phase, you are then going to erase your grid lines, all right? Once your grid lines are erased, you can start shading. So um, we have something called a value finder in our classroom, and uh, you can either just eyeball your shading by looking here and trying to copy it, or you can use the value finder to, let's say I'm gonna look at this part of this cup. It is a little darker than a seven, but a little lighter than a six. So when I get in here, I'm going to make it a little darker than a seven and a little lighter than a six. And you can just add all of your shading. Eventually, once your shading is done, you'll end up with something like this.